safety and solace in the woods? Are you bowed down in heart? Do you but hear the clashing discords and the din of life? Then come away, come to the peaceful wood. Here, bathe your soul in silence. Listen, now, from out the palpitating solitude, do you not catch yet faint elusive strains? They are above, around, within you everywhere. Silently listen, clear, and still more clear they come. They bubble up in rippling notes and swell in singing tones. Now, let your soul run the whole gamut of the wondrous scale until, responsive to the tonic chord, it touches the diapason of God's grand cathedral organ, filling earth for you with heavenly peace and holy harmonies. James Welton Johnson, author, poet, songwriter, civil rights activist. Woods and meadows have both historical and symbolic meaning. On Sundays, when people did not have to be in the fields, they embraced the woods. It was Sundays when people would leave their cabins and gather together in what were known as camp meetings or hush harbors, deep enough in the woods so the words of encouragement they spoke to each other didn't reach the ears of the plantation owner. It was there, in a meadow or woods, they found safety and solace. There, they could lift their unison voices in song, dance, send their prayers to the heavens, and be comforted and encouraged that slavery could hold their bodies but not their souls. And for many thousands who made the bold and dangerous decision to escape the condition of enslavement, traveling on foot through the woods at night was their best hope for making it to a free state. Some had the good fortune of being led by the great Underground Railroad conductor Harriet Tubman. She knew woods well and could convince even the most frightened runaway, even a child, to keep going and not turn back. But most who took their freedom into their own hands had no guide other than the moon and the constellation of stars. But like Harriet, they had a fundamental knowledge and understanding of the forest environment. Often, people made their escape after dark to get a good head start before daybreak. Darkness gave them cover, and under the light of a full moon with its rays filtering through the branches of trees, they could see where they were stepping as they walked the forest floor. And on those nights when clouds hid the moon and stars, people used their sense of touch, feeling for moss that grew on the north side of the trunks of some trees. They used their sense of hearing to discern a natural sound from an unnatural one, to listen for the sound of a river, the direction of its flow. Woods can offer up a cacophony of sounds, the hooting of owls, the call of the whippoorwill, foxes screeching, or bullfrogs, crickets and cicadas croaking and chirping into the night. But as unlikely as it may sound, the woods with all of its ambient noises, was a place of shelter, protection, comfort even, a place of hope of a better life to come. Forests, woods, meadows, secret places for camp meetings, hush harbors, roads to freedom, pathways to physical and spiritual transcendence.